Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Chris Tofin and on my previous video I talked about the diseases that affect the male reproductive system and we talked on three different diseases that affect the male reproductive system, the penile cancer, the priapism and the testicular cancer. And what do we mean by the male reproductive system? This like I told you, simply functions in the production of semen and depositing of semen. So when we talk on diseases that affect the male reproductive system, we simply mean things that can prevent these functions from occurring. So here I'll bring to you three more diseases that affect the male reproductive system. The first one will be the femosis, the second one will be the erectile dysfunction, and the third one will be the male infertility. So stay with me as we move over to this topic. As we said, we're going to be handling the diseases that affect the male reproductive system. And the first one is the phimosis. And what do we mean by phimosis? This actually has to deal with the foreskin problem. Now here as a boy, you're growing up, you're you come, you as a belt, maybe you're growing up, you have tight foreskin, of which as you're gradually growing, it tend, it loosens, and it can be pulled forth and back on the penis hair. But in a situation whereby the male is grown, fully grown, has undergone the stage of puberty, and this penis hair can know this foreskin can be pulled forth over to the penis head. It's called phimosis. So here it's an inability to pull or the tightening of the foreskin from preventing it to be pulled over back to the penis head or the glands penis. We have different parts of the penis, the glutes, the body and the glands penis, which can also be the head of the penis. So if you if you notice that the first skin of your penis is not being able to be pulled back over to the head of the penis, then you have femurs. And femurs occurs when the first skin remains unusually tight and cannot be drawn back over to the glands penis. Some men can have femurs throughout their life and are still able to have intercourse although most would probably find it more comfortable without this condition. Inability to pull back the foreskin also means that it is difficult to clear the penis, which increases the chance of infection. Now it's trying to tell us that, this is trying to tell us that um, because you're, you're, um, you have phimosis, it covers the glands penis, it covers the head of the penis, which increases the chance of infection because you can't be able to clean the penis head any longer. It's, the diff it's difficult in cleaning or making sure that the penis head is very clean and this creates a whole chance of infection. And then it does not prevent sexual intercourse, but most people enjoy sexual intercourse when they are foreskin is being pulled back to the penis head. Now the signs and symptoms include the inability to pull back the foreskin, which is the main signs and symptoms. If you can't pull back the foreskin to if you can't pull back the foreskin to expose the head of the penis, it's and the foreskin is very tight and the erection is painful, then that means it's a sign that you have to and then you may also have pain while urinating. So while urinating, you might experience pain due to tightening of the foreskin. Then an advice is to say that you should make sure not to try on your own, stretching the penis skin, trying to pull back the foreskin, showing the penis head. It's not advisable because you can actually cause cracks within these foreskins of which can create a chance of infection. And at the same time, when these cracks are being healed, they remain there as scars, of which they worsen the situation. 
you have a whole lot of complications. It increases and uh, worsens the situation of, or the increases the chances of infection and worsens the case of hemorrhoids. Um, Move over to the second one, the erectile dysfunction, and this simply means the inability to have sufficient erection for a sexual activity. Now, most people tend to call this impotence. And this can actually be caused by psychological factors, situations like depression, stress, work activities, and other psychological problems. Emotional stress, relationship problems, they also result to this erectile dysfunction in a situation whereby you're passing through a whole lot of problems and you're not even having the feeling to have an erection. Then some of these problems can actually be physical problems, of which 75% of erectile dysfunction are not actually caused by psychological problems, but they are mostly caused by physical problems, situations of infections and other stuff, damage around the body system, um, spinal cord injuries, and the rest of them. Then in research, it's also shown that combination of psychological and physical problems also cause erectile dysfunction. So if you notice as a man that you have an erectile dysfunction, which is inability to have an erection during sexual activity or inability to have a sufficient erection, a sufficient erection during sexual activity, then you're having signs and symptoms of sexual erection and you need to tackle this problem. Signs and symptoms Signs and symptoms is just basically the inability to have this erection. So if you notice you have an erectile dysfunction, inability to have sex because of these problems, you should meet a doctor, go for tests, you know what's cause, go for screening, take care of yourself. Now we'll move over to the third one, the male infertility. What we mean by infertility? This simply means the inability to produce children. So when we talk about the male infertility, it simply means the inability for a man to produce children. Now, what is mainly the cause of this? It's most time caused by production of unhealthy sperm. Now, it say that on average, about 50 to 500 million sperm are being ejaculated during orgasm. And up to 100 are able to swim over to the egg where it fertilizes at the ampulla. But in a situation whereby a man has this infertility problem, it makes the chances of fertilization slimmer. Because of unhealthy sperm, this sperm cannot swim fast enough to meet the ova or they can't swim and get past the fallopian tubes for fertilization to occur. So most times because of unhealthy sperm which prevents them, some of them even die off once they get into the female cervix. So in this situation, if you notice that you've been finding it difficult to give birth, you've been finding it difficult to produce children, it's advised you go for checkups to know what exactly is the problem. Now, what we mean by the signs and symptoms? The signs and symptoms simply means once you know that you can't produce and you've seen that this problem is not coming from the lady, you go for checkup to know if you have this male infertility problem. Now, the signs and symptoms include trapped sperm inside the testicles. Number two, orchitis. This simply means inflammation of testicles. Number three, sexual transmitted infection. You can get a whole lot of infection from sexual intercourse. Number four, testicles that don't descend into the scrotum at birth. Yes, at birth, you are I mean, at birth in a norm, a male scrotum is meant, a male testicle is meant to descend into the scrotum. But some people experience this inability of testicles descending into the scrotum, which is a sign and symptom of male infertility. It can cause male infertility. Then number four, test, we have 
vario cosellis. This means vario cos means of the testicles. Then we also have drugs used to treat cancer. For some cancer patients, because of the kind of medications we receive during this treatment, it also causes male infertility. Then we have spinal cord injuries and diabetes. Yeah, diabetes can lead to erectile dysfunction because it produces an healthy span. And spinal cord injury automatically destroys the pelvic region and the vertebral column. So here we are done for the diseases and I'll be handling on treatment to tackle or to handle all kinds of male diseases. The first one is to quit smoking. A whole lot of people out there are not into smoking and smoking is a whole lot it can cause a whole lot of health problems. It doesn't just cause the male reproductive problems. It causes a whole lot of problems in the body. It can give you a respiratory problems, can give you heart problems, it can give you a whole lot of problems in the body. It's not just related down to um, reproductive problems. So quit smoking. It endangers a man's health. Then the other one is go for regular screening. Yes, I've been shouting it every single now and then in my video. Go for regular screening. You out there, make it a norm for you to be going for regular screening. If it's possible once in a week, if it's possible once in a month, but try as much as possible to go for screening. If you experience any signs or symptoms in your place or on your body or on your friend, you advise them to go for medical screening to tackle a particular problem at an early stage or to confirm that you have no problem or to treat and eradicate a particular problem. So if you notice anything, any abnormalities, any form of difference from your normal body flora, you go for medical screening. Then the next one we said we practice safe sex. Yeah, practice safe sex. A whole lot of people out there see it as a norm to jump from one man to another or jump from one lady to another. It's not advisable. If you want to practice safe sex, it's best you go for health checkup screen with your partner to know that this partner is safe and you're dealing with just one partner. Whenever you feel like changing or getting married or whatever, you go for checkup. That is why my number two is important. Go for regular checkup. Keep going for checkups. You don't know whatever that is in your system. Another time, another beautiful thing about regular checkup, it's not just to confirm the reproductive diseases, it can also help you see if you have any other diseases in your body that needs to be handled immediately so go for regular checkups practice safe sex practice safe sex if it's possible you abstain from sex but if you can't abstain from sex you practice safe sex so the next one is increased consumption of calcium and magnesium calcium and magnesium are beautiful substances that helps in the body building building of the body tissues and bones, helps in rebuilding and renewing of cells and all this stuff. So the next one, practice good hygiene. Mm -hmm. Practice good hygiene. I'm going to say this, practice good hygiene. Most of us out there, we don't practice good hygiene. It's not about dressing fine, looking neat outside, but your inside is dirty. Practice good hygiene. Try to wash your body parts properly. It's not about scrubbing all over your body and just rushing out of the bathroom. Take your time. Scrub your body part. Like I told you, in the penis, we have different parts. The roots, the body, and the glands or the head. The glands need to be washed properly. The roots need to be washed properly. The body needs to be washed properly. Likewise, the other parts of the body. 
Without the proper personal hygiene or even environmental hygiene, we endanger ourselves and increase the chances of infection. You don't know where it's coming from. It can even come from your clothes. You might even take care of your body very well, but what of your clothes? What of the environment you're in? So it's said we should practice good hygiene. Personal and environmental hygiene. These are factors that can cause infection. Infections don't just jump out from anywhere. It comes from factors coming from our environment and our personal lifestyles. So practice good hygiene. And the next one is maintain a healthy lifestyle. Maintain a healthy lifestyle. Most of us, we don't exercise at all. You feel it's a norm. Because you're slim, you feel you don't have any reason to work out. You feel because you're not fat, you don't have any reason to work out. It's not just for the fat people. It's not just for the idea of burning fat. Work out. Go out for exercises. Do some works around your environment. It helps in renewing of cells, rebuilding of cells. It's not just burning down fat. Try to work out on your own. You mustn't always live the luxurious lifestyle. Try to trek sometimes. Give yourself some distance to work to replenish your old cells, your dead cells, to renew those cells. So exercise yourself regularly. If it's possible, you go for once in a week. For people that have a very busy life schedule, you will go for once in a week exercise, but if you, you know you have a very free life schedule, you go for maybe two times or three times in a week. They have outdoor exercises, they have indoor exercises. So you don't need to give yourself an excuse that you don't, because of some certain things, you can't go for outdoor exercises. You can actually do those exercises indoor. So there are exercises you can do indoor, there are exercises you can do outdoor. Make sure you engage in one exercise. Then the next one on the lifestyle, maintaining a good lifestyle is healthy diet. Healthy diet. Most of us, I don't know whether it's common in the African area, I don't know. But most people don't understand what we mean by healthy diet. It's not just about the six classes of food where you feel you've added every single ingredient. No, it means we should understand how you are meant to eat at a particular time. You don't just eat cassava in the morning, cassava in the afternoon, and cassava in the night. You don't drink, uh, somebody will eat yam in the morning, come in the afternoon, eat cassava or fufu in the afternoon, and come in the night and eat rice. There are three different food, but they still fall under carbohydrates. So he said we should make sure we eat a healthy food. Mix your food. You eat a very beautiful food in the morning. You eat a different beautiful food in the afternoon. Likewise, your evening. So you don't just swallow in the morning, swallow in the afternoon, and swallow in the night. Go for a healthy diet. These are things that help for a healthy lifestyle. These are things that help to reduce the chances of any kind of disease, not just the male reproductive disease. If you're fond of eating carbohydrates every single now and then, you will definitely fall down with illnesses because of lack of other vitamins that you need in the body, because of lack of other classes of food that you need in the body. So healthy diet is very important if you want to manage your health. Now we move over to the next one. We say the last one, um, which is visit your doctor. Mm. Visit your doctor. Visiting your doctor is actually different from going for regular screening. Going for regular screening is just that you already have what you're going to, to a particular health center to do. But visiting a doctor is some it's a, a situation whereby you're having a one-on-one -on -one interaction with someone a health personnel a doctor 
some people out there don't know how to open up they don't know how to talk this is what i'm passing through they don't know they feel ashamed i'm here to encourage you go out and talk to a doctor speaking is first solution to a problem if you're going out there talk to a doctor visit a doctor make it something as make it as a lifestyle if it's something you can do two times in a year once in a year three times in a year make it something that you keep doing go to a doctor visit there are many things that happen when you visit a doctor you can also go for regular for checkups you can go for running tests you can discuss about a sign and symptom that you've observed in your body a whole lot of things you can also get educational advices from your doctors on how to live a better life so visiting your doctors encompasses it co it covers every single thing that i've said it helps in treatments it helps in educating it helps in living a, li a healthy lifestyle so try as much as possible to visit your doctor as much as possible it helps to reduce a whole lot of health problems remember my treatment doesn't just go for health um, doesn't just go for the male reproductive system this treatment goes for almost all the sicknesses or diseases of the human body so if you practice all this my general treatment if you practice all this general treatment trust me you will reduce the 95 percent chance of going down with any form of disease so practice all these lifestyles then i want to add something to smoking there are people that have seen that they will tell me that um i don't smoke um, but i have smoke I, I ran a test and i found out that the doctor said from the test results i inhaled smoke or probably they found it in my body and they are surprised because they don't smoke yes smoking doesn't actually mean a situation it's not yes people smoke and it's not advisable to smoke but i want you to understand something you don't necessarily need to go and buy a cigarette and smoke before you will be infected with or before you go down with a particular health problem it's people that live in areas where they have high burning of things factories and all those contaminated air and people that live in villages whereby every single now and then they walk with the firewood whereby they inhale smokes coming out from different cooking pots or whatever it is they are doing or even if you're using a stove in your house and because of improper setting of this stove which can actually cause these smokes coming out it's not it's all these factors can cause healthy health problems it doesn't mean you need to get a cigarette and smoke before you fall down with any illness some people don't even smoke but because of the circle of friends they move with that smoke they sit with these people that smoke they convert have a conversation with these people that smoke they also inhale the smokes so you don't necessarily need to puff up a cigarette and say that you don't smoke don't smoke doesn't only lie with smokers out there it lies with you making sure that in your environment you don't inhale smoke so you go that is why my last advice is necessary visit your doctor if you notice any sign and symptom if you feel in if you feel uncomfortable about, about a particular thing if you visit your doctor this is a place whereby you are discussing a whole lot of things the doctor you are interacting with this doctor this person is asking you questions you are answering this person's question there are some things you can actually think on your own okay fine um, I'm, I'm not doing this i'm not doing this so i'm fine no there are other factors that can actually lead to those things so you should go to and visit a doctor if you have one-on-one -on -one discussion have to have a discussion open up to this person mind you all health personnel out there we have what we call confidentiality practice whatever you're discussing with anyone 
no other person knows about this thing. So feel free to visit any health personnel out there. Visit your doctors. Talk to them. Nobody will know about your problem. I'm encouraging every one of you out there looking at me, watching this video. Try as much as possible to visit any health center. Go for screening. Go for um, counseling. Visit any health personnel. Talk with them. If you feel you can't even talk with the health personnel, talk with the closest person you have. I'm sure every one of us out there has someone we feel close to. Go and have your discussion with this person. I told you, discussion, talking, opening up is a fast solution to a particular problem. So when you're having this one-on-one -on -one discussion with these people, you're also looking for solution. So talk with them. And I encourage you to observe all these general treatments and personal handling, how you handle yourself and all this stuff. So thank you for being with me in this video. Thank you for the comments that have been coming in. Thank you for the subscription. Thank you so far for the likes and everything. I thank you all. You've been encouraging me so far to keep moving, keep pushing on this channel and I won't disappoint you all as I'll be bringing in different interesting different interesting topics and solutions different things that you may know or you may not even know so stay tuned to my channel make sure you subscribe to that channel give us a comment on each lecture we drop please bring in your comments your comments give me solutions to some things it gives me idea bring in those comments tell me what you think don't feel anything tell me even if you feel like anything if it's about a different topic no problem if it's a question if it's a sign that you're feeling if it's anything no um, don't bother you can leave in i don't know but try and bring in those questions for me let's interact one on one let's conversate between the both of us let's have this discussion it's your comments that will keep encouraging me so far so please bring in those comments like my channel share the channel and thank you for time